Hi guys, welcome to my fourth video of mountain bike rear suspension series and today we will talk about uh, rear suspension systems. Is there any system better than the other? Is the FSR the best system? Is the VPP? Is the single pivot? Does this question make sense? In this video I will show you that it does not make sense to compare systems because within the same system you can get a completely different variety of behaviors of the rear suspension. So stay tuned for the video. In this video uh, I hope to convince you that independently of the type of the suspension system you can have an infinity of different behaviors just by changing the location of these pivots. So that means that um, you cannot say that FSR is the best system for downhill or for climbing because you can have totally different uh, behaviors by just moving a little bit these pivots and still be an FSR system. The same applies with the VPP systems and other types of systems. So let's go and see the difference by moving this pivot here. Okay, so here we have our model. So as you can see, this is the standard pitch, the normal pitch. Then I move the pivot to this point and in another case I move the pivot to that point. For the standard pitch, this is the leverage ratio curves. So as you can see, the bike starts with the leverage ratio of 3 and decreases to leverage ratio of 2.5 at 100 millimeters of travel. And then it increases again the leverage ratio. So this bike is slightly progressive in the first uh, part of the travel. And then in the last part of the, of the travel is a regressive bike. So if, if we move the, the, the shock point 3 centimeters forward, what happens is this. Okay, so now you have an uh, almost linear bike in the first part of the travel and then a very, very regressive bike. So a very easy to bottom out bike. So now by moving the, the fixed pivot of the shock uh, 3 centimeters backwards, what, what happens is this, the green line, you have a decreasing leverage ratio line from 3.3 to 2.2 this means that you have a super super progressive bike so as you can see by changing just a little bit the shock pivots you pass from a very regressive bike and a shitty bike to a very progressive and very aggressive bike So the last graphs were leverage ratio. The leverage ratio does not depend on the kind of shock. However, if you analyze the forces needed to compress the rear suspension, the kind of shock you use will, will affect the end result. I could have used an air shock to, to, do, to do these simulations, but as you can see here, this is the curve for an air shock. An air shock is a progressive shock so it will be harder to, to analyze. So I prefer to use a spring shock to do comparisons between bikes because coil shocks are completely linear, so there is no progressivity. So they act as a neutral, neutral shock, so it's much easier to compare the, um, the forces needed to compress the, the rear wheel. So this graph shows, shows you the, the forces needed to compress a specialized pitch. In this case, we have a 500 pounds per inch spring, which is indicated for a 70 kilograms uh, rider. 
So let's see what happens when for the different bikes. So as you can see, the blue line is the standard pitch, um, and the green line is the progressive pitch. And for this bike, you need more force to compress the bike, regarding to the regressive pitch, which needs less force to compress to compress the bike. In this example, I show you that just by moving the, the shock fixed pivot, we change drastically the leverage ratio uh, curves. Of course, suspensions are not just leverage ratio analysis. You also have anti-squat, chain grow, anti-rise and some other stuff. But leverage ratio are probably the main aspect of the suspension. In this particular case, by moving that pivot, it didn't ch change the other parameters, it only changed the leverage ratio. But if I move other pivots, I will also change the, the other parameters of the suspension. So does it make sense to compare FSR with other types of system? It does not make sense because each bike has its unique behavior. So you have to analyze each particular bike and not the system.